Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Today, Brad, we're going to talk about implants. Not the kind that you're talking about, but uh, knee replacement yeah, implants, sure. not implants implants. Well, these are implants. They are. Let's start with the knee. So a lot of people come to the office and they're like, well, what does a knee replacement look like? And they actually can't believe that it looks the way that it does. So right. sometimes holding them helps people appreciate more. You got to remember a knee replacement is really a knee resurfacing. And we're not replacing the muscles or nope. the ligaments or the nerves or the tendons. We're just resurfacing the ends of the bone. Right. So we cut the ends of the bones off. So everybody for sure gets the end of their thigh bone and the end of their shin bone replaced. And then we may or may not replace the kneecap or the undersurface of the kneecap. Right. So here is the femoral component. So this part here goes on the end of the femur. If this was like a femur, that goes on the end of it. And this metal replaces the cartilage that is at the end of your bone, which is worn off when you have arthritis. Right, and that holds on to the end of your thigh bone uh, in two different ways. One, a series of angled cuts that are very specific that perfectly match the inside of the thigh bone. So it sits on there and has some inherent stability just because of shape. And then the other way is with typically cement. However, uncemented implants are seem to be making a bit of a, a, a push. Right, so you just take some cement and we put it right here on the undersurface of this implant. The cement we use is polymethyl methacrylate, PMMA. It's very similar to plexiglass. Uh, it's, um, it's a two-part mixture, exothermic. It gives off heat as it sets and yes. it acts like a grout and it adheres this part to the bone. And often we'll put a little bit of cement on the bone as well. So it starts in a liquid or a runny fashion and then becomes a bit doughy. And then inside of about 15 minutes has cured most of the way and actually is quite hard. Yeah. Okay. So femoral component. Next part. Oh, so what's that made of, Paul? Oh, cobalt chrome. This is made of, usually, usually these are made of cobalt chrome. They might have like a coating on them if someone has a metal allergy. Yeah. Sometimes they put like a little thin layer of a ceramic coating to protect the body from the cobalt chrome. But 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a cobalt chrome uh, bearing surface. You think, oh, I w I'd rather use titanium. Everyone I mean, always yeah, says, is it titanium? titanium? Is it titanium? titanium? My golf driver is made out of titanium. Yeah, I want my knee made out of titanium. Titanium is a great material. The, 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 the stiffness in that is kind of closer to bone than cobalt chrome. But the problem is titanium is not a good bearing surface. It's not good at resisting crack propagation and stuff, so you would never use titanium in a bearing surface. This is a bearing surface, so it's a polished cobalt chrome. People didn't realize they were gonna get a little metallurgy lesson yeah. today. Yeah, this is it. Take this to the periodic table. <laughs> okay, uh, so. Get your periodic tables out for the tibial component. Okay, so for the tibia, um, similarly, we make a very flat cut along the top of the tibia, typically perpendicular to that long axis. And we've talked about computer-assisted surgery and how we increase the accuracy of that. And then the tibia also has this little keel. It's a little triangular-shaped um, segment of the implant that sits inside of a little hole, or essentially a hole, inside the tibia that can, helps control rotation. So it sits on top, and then this keel controls rotation. Similarly to the femur, you have a rough and surface where we place cement on it, a little bit of cement on the tibia, we impact it, we remove the excess cement, again, letting it cure. And now sometimes we don't use cement and these are press fitted in and, and the coatings here are porous coated so bone can grow into it. So that would be an uncemented knee replacement versus a cemented knee replacement. Both are entirely valid ways of doing it. Yes. Okay. And then what lives between the metal? Well, we're not going to let the metal rub on the metal, right? Uh, so we have to have a bearing surface. And uh, in the total knee replacement, the bearing surface is made out of high-density polyethylene. Okay? This is an example of a bearing surface. This is basically a plastic, high-density polyethylene. And it's treated in different ways to increase its toughness and increase its wear characteristics. Because if you can imagine, with the femur, Rubbing on this with every step you take, eventually it's going to wear. Wear, right? And it has a little curve to it that allows to allows it to slide a little bit as well as rotate through. And now there's two different ones here. Mine has a post and yours doesn't. Why is that? My post broke off. There you go. No, because sometimes implants will have a post or a deep dish to replace the cruciate ligaments, okay? Other times, if the posterior cruciate ligament is retained when you do the knee replacement, you don't need a post here. So and your surgeon will talk to you about 
the procedure that they prefer, and whether or not you would get a cruciate retaining or a cruciate substituting total knee. Again, both are acceptable ways depending on the situation. Right. And you can see the polyethylene snaps into the tibial component most of the time. Yep. And then this becomes your articulating, articulating surface. Some designs, this plastic just sits on here and is allowed to rotate. That's called a uh, mobile bearing type of implant, but most of the time the plastic is fixed to the tibia and then the femoral component articulates with it. Now this component can be made of titanium yep. because it's not a bearing surface, so sometimes the tibial component might be made out of titanium. That's your total knee replacement implant. And you can see that post, it actually prevents the tibia from going backwards. So if you show there, you'll see it kind of catches on that little ledge. There you go. All right. So now, in case you're wondering what went into your knee if you had a knee replacement, or what's going to go into your knee if you're going to get a knee replacement, or what's going to go into your knee if you continue this high-risk soccer or other sport well into your 60s and 70s, and, and a lot of, there are a lot of different companies. The vast majority of companies have a very similar generic strategy to implant. So they all have their specific pros and cons. Um, ultimately, you want your surgeon to do the implant that they're the most comfortable with and that they feel is most appropriate for uni. So the, the brand is probably less important. Yeah. There okay. Well, hey, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment down below. Let us know what kind of implant you have. Yeah. And uh, remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time. Hey, 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 before you swipe away, thank you so much for watching our videos. Yeah, for sure. We know they can drag on, get a little bit long and boring sometimes, but it's all information that we're trying to pass along. And so if you want to watch one of the other videos, swipe it up here. Where? Up here. Okay. Let me do it for you. And remember to subscribe down below. Let me do that for you.